Now let's talk about some interactive Zoom features. Now Zoom, because we're going to focus most on that because it's the easiest of the platforms to use. And let me say this, I have to throw this out here because I just talked about security. The reason why Zoom is so popular and it grew from something like, I want to say it was like 10 million users by the end of December, it was what they're having monthly to over 200 million users by the end of, I think it was March or February. It was crazy. The growth was explosive, end of March. The thing that makes it so popular is because it's so easy to use. The things that make it easier to use it as competitor are actually what makes it a little bit more likely to cause um, security issues. So as they keep closing these loops, it will be a little bit harder to access, but it's not hard. So just like people can use GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar and Google Hangouts, they're not difficult. It's just that Zoom is even easier to get someone who's not used to using this kind of software on, all right? So let's talk about interactive Zoom meeting features because there's Zoom meetings and there's Zoom webinars. And I want you to be equipped to know the difference because you can set up either one in your account. So when we're looking at the meetings here, this is an example from meetings. What you'll notice is you'll see a security tab. You'll see where you can manage participants, polls. So if you really want a lot of interactivity, you can actually have polls set ahead of time. There's a chat feature. You can square your, uh, share your screen. You can record it. Now the breakout rooms feature is pretty cool because let's say that you have 30 people in the meeting, you can break them out into so many groups and, and set the number of people in each group let them go into breakouts. You can actually travel around to their different breakouts. They're having their own conversations, okay, amongst each other, and then you can pull them back. So you're controlling all of it. That's probably one of my favorite features about meetings. And there's also reactions where people can clap or they can give you a thumbs up, okay? Now, these are meetings. Also, the thing you have to understand the difference is, is that in meetings, you have the ability for all the participants to pop up as those little squares. And if they, show, if they choose to show their webcam, you can see their pictures. If they don't, then you'll just see their names or however they log in, right? So that's meeting. Webinar doesn't allow you to see everyone. Webinar only allows you to see the host and the participants. So it's a little bit different. If you want everyone to be able to see each other, meeting. If you want it to be mostly about the host and the people on the panels, the panelists, that would be webinar. But keep in mind, while the meeting feature is cool because everyone can see everyone, if there's some type of lesson or anything major going on and you have like 100 people, that's going to be a bit much, okay? So you kind of have to think about the user experience on these things, all right? Now, we've talked about Zoom meeting. Let's look at Zoom webinar. Zoom webinar has many of the same things as Zoom meetings. But the difference is that it doesn't allow for breakouts. That's a big one. Another thing that you might want to be aware of, let's go ahead and, and get into here, is the whiteboard feature, which is actually available on both webinar and meeting last time I checked, okay? And the whiteboard feature is, what you do is you go to sharing your screen at the bottom. And this, right, what you're looking at right here is actually webinar. Also notice something else at the bottom. Let me show this. For webinar, you'll see that they don't have the reactions they don't have breakouts, but they do have Q&A here, which they did not have in meetings. So I just want to point that out. So you see the whiteboard feature. If you click share screen, which is green right there, at the top, you see the little whiteboard option. If we were to click on that, this is what pops up. So you can draw things, you can spotlight things, you can type things in. And this is basically a virtual whiteboard. So as you're talking with your team, you're kind of working things out. Now, if I can give you a power tip, when it comes to designing these meetings, is that if you're in charge of the meeting, you shouldn't be doing everything. And so I strongly suggest that there's one person who's in charge of running the meeting in terms of verbally, you know, going through the different line items, items you need to go over, and someone else is actually kind of producing it. They're the ones clicking the different buttons, launching the polls, putting people into breakouts. They're the ones in charge of those controls, pulling up the whiteboard, things like that. Now, the other thing that many people do not know about GoToMeeting or not GoToMeeting, Zoom Meeting or Zoom Webinars is that it is closed captioning enabled. And so you have the ability, if you're the host, you can either type in the captions yourself. Now, if you're speaking, I would not suggest that. I'd suggest that you get someone else to do that for you. 
This way we can make sure that we're being completely inclusive and thinking about some of our congregants and leaders who might have uh, special needs that we need to make sure that we're considering, right? And so closed captioning, if you know that there's anyone that's in your congregation and you're having your weekly meeting in there, make sure that you enable that so that they can still participate at the same level as everyone else.